Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing. This is our Triangle Masterclass series and today we are making hourglass units which are sometimes called quarter square triangles and we're doing it all from squares. I love this method because when you cut them all apart into four tiny triangles first and sew them back together, you're working entirely on the bias and the bias is stretchy. But if you do it this way, we're going to sew everything together while it's all still attached as a square and it's much less likely to stretch out of size, which gives you blocks that are the accurate size when you are all ready to go. Now, I save this one for once we've done a few of the other blocks for uh, two reasons. One, you kind of have to be pretty exact when it comes to sewing your scant quarter inch seam for everything to s turn out the correct size when you're done. Also, this is the one block where we're going to be pressing one seam to the side, the way you're traditionally taught to press seams. The other seam will be open. But what that does is by pressing one to the side, it's gonna allow us to get really great joints for our center, but it also is gonna eat up a little bit extra fabric, which makes it a little bit more challenging to get everything to be the right size when we're all done. But don't worry, I'm gonna make it super easy so that way you guys can do it at home. Now we do have a pattern that we are creating all of these. You can follow along with us and do our quilt along. It's called Raspberry Sherbert. You can get it on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you get a quilt kit while supplies last, then your pattern will be free. You don't need a whole lot of supplies to do this. We just need a rotary cutter with a sharp blade. Sharp blades are important because when we trim those uh, triangles down later, we wanna make sure that we're not pushing our triangle bits out of place so that our seams don't go straight to the corner. I also really like the friction gel pens that come in a couple of different colors. And that's for marking our seams or where we're going to sew. And then just a regular six and a half inch ruler. I really like these from Ulfa. They're frosted, so it kind of creates like a filter like you're used to seeing in your phones these days. So you can see your fabrics really clearly whether they are light or dark. And that's it, that's all you need, no specialty rulers or anything like that. Let's get started. So we're starting each video off with a little bit of math. Now, if you're following a pattern like ours, they've done this math for you. But if you are modifying a pattern that tells you to cut everything into tiny triangles first, or you're making your own pattern or changing sizes, this is good to know. So you want to add one and a quarter inches to the finished size of your unit, and that's what size you're gonna cut your squares to. And you're gonna need two for your background and two for your focus fabrics. Now, in our case, we're gonna have four inch finished hourglass units. So I've cut mine to five and a quarter inches. And again, I've got two of my background and two of my focus fabrics for my fat quarters. All right, now I need to draw a line on the wrong side of both of mine, and we're gonna draw it straight from corner to corner. I'm drawing my lines really dark so you guys can see them at home, but when you're doing it at home, just a light line is perfectly fine. Just something you can see when you're sewing it together. And I like to go straight from the middle out. I find that works really well and doesn't push the fabric too much. And it's really important that you are drawing straight out to the corner because if you're off a little bit, then it's really easy to just sew along that line instead of manually move. And then your triangles may not end up going straight to your points and you're gonna have trouble later. All right, I'm gonna do that for the other one, then we're ready to start sewing. All right, so now we're just gonna arrange these right sides together with our other units. Uh, it's important to note these are supposed to be the same size. If they are not the same size, whenever you're sewing any type of triangle from a square, you've done something wrong, go double check where you're at. Now, if you wanna pin, you wanna pin straight across the top and straight across the bottom as we're gonna sew down one side of the straw line and then back on the other. Now, if you missed our half square triangle, I would definitely start with that video because we go into detail on why we do that and then also on the scant quarter and seam and why you wanna use it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start stitching these. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the edge of my presser foot with that line that we drew. And I'm gonna treat that as though it's the end, the edge of our fabric. And I'm gonna make sure that my presser foot is always in line with that drawn line. And what I like to do, because I don't like to pin all of these, is once I get the points on my throat of my sewing machine, just make sure my points are nice and lined up. And then I'll just hold a fingertip there. And that kind of keeps everything together until I can get to sew it. 
And it's really important that you maintain an accurate scant quarter inch seam all the way down. So all I do once I can't hold on to the tip anymore is just move my finger a little bit to the right. That way I can just let it stay right next to there and I can maintain that accurate stitch all the way down. Now I'm going to go ahead and chain piece these. To do that, you just are going to lift up and you're going to put your point so that it's kind of touching the other one. This gives you a little bit of gap in between. That way you just have a couple of threads to cut and you can just keep on sewing. When you get to the very end of your chain piecing line, all you're going to do is you're going to flip everything around and you're going to stitch down the other side of the line. If you've been following along with our masterclass, then you know that now is the time when we're just gonna take a peek at our blocks, make sure that everything looks nice and flat, and we're gonna check that the distance between our seams is less than half an inch, but more than three eighths. Right smack dab in the middle is perfect. That means that we've sewn a scant quarter inch seam and everything is gonna turn out the right size in the end. Now you don't need to check every one, maybe just check a few at the beginning, check a few at the end, check a few in the middle, and if everything looks good, then go ahead and start cutting. If they don't look good and a lot of them don't look good, you're going to have to pick those seams and do it again. I'm sorry, but it's way better than having blocks that don't fit together in the end and having to fudge absolutely everything. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these down the center line, just like we've been saying all along. It's not super important that you are exactly on the line, but you want to make sure that the seams aren't too skinny, which means less than eighth of an inch, because then they can pop open when you're using them or even just when it gets on the long arm frame to be quilted. All right, this is the only time we're gonna press to the dark side. To do that, we're gonna first set our seam just by putting our iron on top of that. It helps the threads lay nice and flat within the threads of the fabric. Then we're going to gently open this up and we're going to use our fingers to finger press it out and straight. I find that this helps it lay nice and flat, so that way that seam stays pointing that way in all directions. If you just kind of pull it like this, you can see that that seam is kind of wanting to go back the other way, and then you're not going to have seams that are all going in the same direction, and it's gonna be a problem. Now here's where I see people mess up the majority of the time. What they do is they take their iron and they plop it right down on top. And what that can do, and why it's a huge problem, especially when you're doing anything with triangles, is it will make sure that your, your seam is not as flat as it could be. And sometimes you can even press in pleats, which means you're losing fabric on the side that you're pressing the seam under. And you're gonna have a really hard time getting everything to size. So what you wanna do to avoid that is put your iron down completely completely on the side that you're pressing away from and then just drag it out with the flattest part of the iron and then you're going to want to hold that on there for just a second just so that it can get nice and flat and you don't want to go all around like this just a nice back and forth on that seam is perfectly fine if you go all around like that then you might not end up with the right size so why have I been preaching to press your seams open in almost every video, but right now we are telling you to press it to the side. Well, eventually we're going to be pinning this to another one. And by being able to lock these seams in place, by having them press to uh, the opposite sides, it's gonna be a lot easier to get a really great join in the center than if we did it another way. Now, this is one of the only times that I recommend doing this. The other time is for real newbies who are just doing simple things things like squares because it's a lot easier for them to feel and be able to get the seams locked together if they're pressing in opposite directions. But once you get past that point, most of the time you're going to get a lot better results if you can press open unless there's really specific reasons not to like we are for this one. All right, I'm going to press my others and then we're ready to get this turned from a half square triangle to a quarter square triangle hourglass unit. One last little tip about pressing the seams under for this step is the area where you're most likely to not get it pressed all the way over and get that seam as flat as possible is going to be in your corners. And that's because it's just really easy to accidentally just have a little bit too much coming over. So if this seam is not going right out to that corner, then you got a problem and you didn't do something quite right. So you need to double check and see what's going on there. Now you don't want to fight it so much that this seam ends up becoming 
curved. You want it to remain nice and straight, or again, you're gonna have problems when you uh, trim it down. You want it to be nice and straight, going straight up to the corners with no extra fabric poking over that folded seam. All right, so now we're gonna take two of our fabrics, and with the wrong side up, we're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. My six and a half inch ruler isn't quite long enough for that, so I just use a little bit bigger one for this task. And what I do is I just draw my line going straight out, and you wanna make sure that you've got your pen angled in toward it. If you've got it straight up and down or definitely to the side, you're not gonna be right in the middle. And then you're gonna have some issues when you come to trim everything up because you're not gonna be quite where you need to be. Again, it's super important to make sure you're going straight out to the corner of each bit so you can sew this accurately. What happens, by the way, if you don't write that line straight into the corner and you end up sewing a scant quarter inch seam a little bit too far to one side is you'll end up with one half of it will be correct the right size and then the other half when you cut it apart and you're going to get two for each of these when we cut these apart on that drawn line will be too small because you will have traveled too far over in this direction when you stitched and so even though you had that scant quarter inch seam it wasn't too far away from where your drawn line was and the true center is so that's why it's super important especially with this block to do that because we're already losing a little bit by pressing the seam to one side and we just have to be super careful when you hit these steps. It's not hard, you just have to have a little bit of attention to detail. All right, so now I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna place them right sides together. And this is the reason why we have pressed these seams from one side to the other, is I can make sure I can get my points lined up here and here, and then I can feel that these seams are nested together. A really great way to check is just to put your finger where that draw line is and go ahead and pull it back. And those seams should be matching perfectly, which they are, and that's great. All right, so we all know, if you've watched my videos for a long time, I don't like to pin very much, but this is an instance in which I will because it's very important that those lines stay together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put my pin in on the bottom of that seam allowance right over where the seam is. That's because we're gonna stitch all the way down this side. We're gonna stop with our needle down in the first half of that seam allowance because that needle being down is gonna kind of act like a pin and hold these points together. Then I can pull my pin out and stitch all the way down and then come right back up the other side. Now, if you want, you can also pin across the top and bottom. That's your choice, but this is a must pin. You cannot skip that step. All right, so just like before, we're gonna just gonna go ahead and start stitching. And one thing that happens pretty regularly to people when they do this is there's a little lip here that's created where your sewing machine storage case hits your bobbin. And sometimes that can push this fabric going back the other way. So what I like to do is just lift it up and then lay it down. And you can feel if it's going the right way. Just put your hand on top and you'll be able to feel real easily if it got flipped back or not. So then I'm just gonna keep on stitching. All right, now I'm stopping with my needle down and I've got it really in that first half of that seam allowance. It is perfect. It's gonna hold everything together. So then I can remove that pin, make sure my points are in line down here. Just kind of hold those in place with my finger and let the feed dogs pull that up. Then I can go ahead and put the other one through right behind it. Again, you just kind of have those points match and the feed dogs will pull it up, leaving just a few threads in between, perfect for clipping. When you get all the way to the end of your chain piecing, just go ahead and turn that around and stitch down the other side. So what I like to do when I'm getting to the end of a chain piecing like this is stitch all the way past, and then I just lift up and line up the next one. That way my scant quarter inch seam is really good all the way through.
All right, just like before, it's a really good idea at this point to make sure everything is laying nice and flat and double check the distance between your seams. Make sure everything looks good. Also make sure that everything looks good down at the points. You know, you might have a half inch seam, but it may be going kind of off to the point and then one might end up a little tiny and then it'll be like, what happened? Well, you, you didn't draw your line straight and so then one side got a little small. So you sewed right, but you didn't draw your line right. So that's an important thing to check. Now, I didn't stress this before, but I will now. We have not trimmed anything yet. We're gonna wait till trim until we are all done at the end because we wanna have the maximum amount of fabric. So that way we are gonna make sure we have a piece that's the correct size. All right, everything's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a trim down the center. Again, making sure that those seams don't get too skinny, although it isn't super important to be exactly on the line that we drew. So now this to me is the coolest part because we can open it up and we can really have some really fun units here. And they're all a little bit different. We've got a few things in common, but they're really, really fun. All right, so at this point we are gonna press everything open just so that we have the largest block possible for when we're trimming down and things will lay nice and flat, at least on two of the four corners when we sew it together. All right, we're gonna press the seam open just like we have all the other triangle units in our masterclass so far. Now you wanna make careful that you don't press these seams in the wrong direction. So you really wanna lift and press as you're working down and that way everything will stay going the direction it should be. Make sure you also press in the other direction as well. Now, so just like to bring my iron down and up again, just to get those corners as good and flat as possible before we go to the next step of trimming. Because if you get it really super flat, it's going to be a lot easier to trim and have everything be the right size. It's kind of like if you don't press your fabric before you start cutting, your strips might and your squares might not be quite the right size because things just kind of were shifty on you a little bit. So get it as flat as you can at this stage, and then we're going to trim. Kind of the point where it becomes really obvious if you didn't quite press the seams uh, under as well as you could have because you'll end up with a little bit of extra fabric fold going over and your seam won't go all the way to the corner and also it won't lay super flat if you try to press it open because you're just adding in extra fabric and so it's like if you're trying like say you cut two pieces of wood at a 45 degree angle and then you try to add a little bit more back in well they're not going to fit together because they were supposed to be at a 45 degree and you added in extra. So this is the point where it's going to become really obvious if you didn't do as good a job as you could have when you press those seams under. So take a look, make sure everything's looking the way it should. All right, so I feel like this is always the moment of truth because this is the unit that is most likely to be undersized. Now, if you find that you are consistently having issues with this, instead of adding one and a quarter inches to your cut size, just add one and a half. And then you'll always have plenty to cut off and you'll be just fine but the math does work for this. Um, and it's okay if it's a little smaller, but if this bit is significantly smaller, like more than an eighth of an inch smaller than it's supposed to be, then you definitely should consider either getting better with your scant quarter and seam, getting better with your pressing, or just bump it up and cut it at one and a half instead of one and a quarter larger than your finished size. All right, this is a good example to cut on because it actually is just a hair small and it is because of pressing that seam open that did it that way. Um, so I'm able to get my 45 degree line going straight up and down, which is perfect. Um, but I'm a little small here on the four and a half side. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my line going straight up the seam and then I've got my four and a half even with the edge. And I'm also making sure that this point up here is going to be even with the edge of the ruler. It's not gonna make it out to four and a half because there just is enough fabric there. But as long as it's even with the top, it'll be all right. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a trim. We're really just cutting off maybe a couple threads and some dog hairs. All right, so now we've got our points going right to the corners here, here and here, so that's good. We're gonna give it a 180 degree flip 
and so now our cut edge is on the left and the bottom. Again, if you are uh, not right-handed, then it's gonna be on the other side. All right, so in all the previous ones, we have been able to line up the cut edge with the edge here. Now this one is a, a tiny bit undersized. It is less than an eighth of an inch off, so it's gonna be totally fine. We're gonna be able to fudge that, and we're gonna cover how to do that in the video on how to put the entire block together, because that's part of being a quilter. That's when you get from being a beginner who doesn't quite know what to do with it, to an advanced quilter who knows how to move things around just a little bit to make it appear flat uh, when you get to the top. And it, it totally works. I do this all the time. Everybody does this all the time. But uh, I'm gonna show you how to cut it so that way it's gonna look like it was right. So I'm still lining up. This is always the most important one is the 45 degree line going through that seam. And I'm able to get my edge right up to here. And I'm also able to get the edge right up to there. Now, if you need to, you can use these dog ears to kind of move things around a little bit. In this case, they're pretty good where I need them to be. So I'm just gonna trim those off. And so now we have a block unit that is, is a tiny little bit undersized, but it's gonna be okay. Uh, like totally, absolutely okay, because we're gonna be able to fit that in. We have our points going to the corners, which is the most important thing, because if you don't have your points going to the corners, then it's gonna be really hard to make them match up when we go to join our block together. So ideally, everything is gonna be exactly four and a half inches. You're gonna have a little bit to turn off. But in this case, we are at about, oh, it's less than an eighth of an inch difference, or maybe like a 16th of an inch too small. So that is fine. We're gonna to be totally fine with that. And again, it's because we press that seam to the side instead of open, but having that perfect center is worth it being just a hair too small. Now, if that's something that bothers you, again, just bump everything up by one and a half inches instead of one and a quarter. All right, so that's it. That's all you have to do to get your hourglasses together. You're gonna to get four of these for every four that we started with. It's really fun. I think it's really satisfying. It's fun to mix and match them quite a bit. So you get lots of different fun combinations. And I think it's way more accurate than cutting all of your tiny triangles, sewing all of them together to form your halves and then to form your whole. And it just, it goes a lot faster and quicker that way. So you can make more quilts and enjoy your time. Well, I hope you're enjoying this masterclass series on triangles. Uh, again, we've got a pattern to go with this. You can always just, you know, try it out on your own and really get good at triangles. But if you want to use them all in a pattern, you can download Raspberry Sherbert from our website, shop.quiltanonymous.com. If you get a kit while supplies last, you can get that pattern for free. So just head on over and subscribe to our email list while you're there. You can get 10% off your first purchase. Also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that way you don't miss any videos. We do lots of great tutorials all the time. And we also show you our brand new fabric when it arrives. All right, and until next time, happy quilting. We're doing flying geese next, four at a time, no waste, and they're super accurate, so get excited. <laughs>